objective sciences are like this and our objectivity is coming from our intellectual process. Intellectual process is coming from memory. So memory cannot be fudged, if you fudge the memory, it's a mess. Essentially, we call it a self-preservation. For our self-preservation, our intellect is vital, without it we cannot function. If you say somebody is in anesthesia, if they come back, you say, oh, he's come back to his consciousness. See, everything that you do with your anesthesia has nothing to do with consciousness. The scientific knowledge and the technology and modern medicine has really incredibly improved our quality of life and our life expectancy. But at the same time, I think we should try to um, find some and reconnect to um, the spirituality or, or the pure experience, as, as you say. Would you agree with that, that it's, it's this kind of balance? See, it is like this, if you take a motorcycle mechanic, he's very good with the motorcycles, let's say. But now you ask him to fix a computer, well, he can use his screwdriver and open the cover. Beyond that, he doesn't know a thing about it, all right? This is just like this. Objective sciences are like this. It is always one plus one is two. That's the only way objectivity can work. You cannot say one plus play… one plus one is eleven also, forget about a million, all right? You cannot say that because this is the nature of objective objectivity and our objectivity is coming from our intellectual process. Intellectual process, it's coming from memory. So memory cannot be fudged, if you fudge the memory, it's a mess. I remember this is one and this is one and now I put these two things together and say this is two. Now this has a memory basis. If I fudge this, then my intellect becomes useless, all right? So, intellect is handling one aspect of our life, which essentially we call it a self-preservation. For our self-preservation, our intellect is vital, without it we cannot function. Right now, all the things that you said, it has improved our life expectancy, it enhanced our uh, life in so many ways. No, it has not enhanced the quality of our life at all. It has only enhanced the comfort and convenience levels in the world and definitely life expectancy. All this is definitely self-preservation, isn't it? It's survival process. So when it comes to self-preservation, self our intellect is vital. Without this one functioning, you cannot uh, survive in this world. All the five senses are fun functioning, they are feeding the data into your intellect and from there you are using it. How efficiently you use it will determine how efficiently you survive. So your life expectancy enhanced means your efficiency of survival has increased, that's all it is. So you are more healthy than what people were in the past, I don't think so, but suppose we are, it simply means your survival process is little more efficient. So leaving the survival process, now you're talking about consciousness. Consciousness means See, the English word consciousness is very loosely used. If you say somebody is in anesthesia, if they come back, you say, oh, he's come back to his consciousness. See, everything that you do with your anesthesia has nothing to do with consciousness. It has something to do with body and various functions of the body. You are shutting down certain aspects of the bodily functions. One of them is transmission of pain, which is the main interest when somebody is going to surgery, you don't want to stop their heart, you don't want to stop their brain, you would like to see the transmission of pain stops. Whatever is being cut is being cut, whatever damage or fixing is that is happening is happening, whatever parts of the body may be being removed, what is not vital may be being pulled out, all that is happening. Only transmission of pain is not happening. This has got nothing to do with losing consciousness and gaining consciousness, there's no such thing. Because there are no alternate words, we use the same words. Uh, language is a different aspect, language is also a product of our intellect. So it can only talk in opposites. Without polarities, there is no language. Without polarities, your intellect cannot function. But when you talk about consciousness, you're not talking about two polarities, there's no A, A consciousness and B consciousness, there's no positive consciousness and negative consciousness, there's just one. As we sit here, this is my body, that is your body, distinctly established. Right now, it is one hundred percent like this. I don't know what you're drinking, I can't see, but whatever you're drinking, 
what's in the cup is not you. The moment you drink it, after some time it becomes you. This is happening right now. So, though what you think is your body and what I think is my body is just a piece of this planet, right now it is distinctly clear, this is my body, that is your body, hundred percent. This is my mind and that is your mind, this is my… these are my emotions and those are your emotions, these are my experiences, those are your experiences. But there is no such thing as my consciousness and your consciousness. This is a living consciousness. We blew our own bubble. I'm sure you have uh, that little wonderful boy who came on the screen, I'm sure he's blowing soap bubbles at you sometime. So, if you blow a soap bubble, this is my bubble, that's your bubble. Poop it went, then there is no such thing as my bubble and your bubble, there is no such thing as my air and your air. Consciousness is just like this. Right now you have blown your bubble, I have blown my bubble. This is me, that is you. But when this goes poop, there is no such thing as my consciousness and your consciousness. It is just that it is only the human creature on this planet who has the neurological capability and sophistication of mechanism that if they allow it, they can access this dimension of consciousness. No other creature is really capable of accessing it. This doesn't mean there is no consciousness in them. Without that, the life process wouldn't happen. There is consciousness even where there is no body, all right? Only thing is, you need a certain sophisticated instrument to access that, which is the human mechanism. This is why we consider being human is a great privilege, because you have access to dimensions beyond your physical boundaries. That is the fundamental significance of being human. So, let us not misunderstand the instrument and what we see, if you take a telescope and see, you saw another galaxy, but the galaxy is not produced by the telescope, the galaxy is there. The telescope only gave you an access. Similarly, your body, your brain, whatever, I don't want to identify different things, from your hair to your toes, everything is body as far as I'm concerned, including your brain. It is just another dimension of the body. So this body, if we keep it in a certain way, if we do not contaminate it with too many ideas, philosophies, identities, if you keep it in a certain level of openness, this will become an access point to what we are referring to as consciousness or the basis of the life that we are. You have the necessary instruments to experience it, not the instruments in your lab. You as a person, you have the necessary instrument to experience this. Will you allow it or not, is the only question. As I said in the beginning, it all depends on how you are identified. If your identifications are limited, you have lost the ability to experience it. If your identity is, uh, you know, n not identified with anything, you kept yourself loose like that, then there is a possibility of experiencing it. In this profound discussion between Sadhguru and neurologist Mr. Stephen Laurie, we have delved into the depths of consciousness, exploring its mysteries through the lens of science and spirituality. Mr. Stephen Laurie, renowned for his groundbreaking work in neuroscience, has provided invaluable insight into the workings of the mind, shedding light on the intricate interplays between neuroscience and spirituality. Throughout this enlightening conversation, we have uncovered new perspective of consciousness, challenging our understanding and leaving us to embark on a journey of self-discovery. As we navigate the realm of the mind and consciousness, we are reminded of the profound interconnectedness of science and spirituality and the endless possibilities that lies within. So as we conclude this discussion, it's important to reflect on the wisdom shared and the inside gain. Let us carry forth the lesson learned, embrace the complexities of consciousness with curiosity and openness. May we continue to explore the depth of our existence with, with reverence and wonder, recognizing the infinite potential that resides within each of us. This conversation has been a testament to the power of collaboration and the beauty of exploring the unknown together. Let us remain inspired by the 
a quest for knowledge and understanding knowing that the journey to consciousness is as vast as boundless as the universe itself thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey as we part our way for now may we carry the light of consciousness within us illuminating our path with clarity and insight until we meet again let us continue to seek to learn and to grow again this is not a summary of sadguru's word it is simply my interpretation of the deep wisdom he imparted please keep these two separated and do not misunderstand thank you for joining in today's video and i will see you in the next one namaskar